Now, a few months ago, we were in South End with Farage at Large, and one of the characters that I came across was James Sinclair. He's the founder and CEO of the Party Man Group of Companies. Now, we went to the ice cream parlour when we were there. Um, it's not been a very good day for ice creams, really, has it? Uh, or a very good month for ice creams. But you've got a variety of businesses. Yeah, yeah. And you're aimed at, you know, the leisure industry. Hospitality and leisure. Yeah, and people and South End's a place people yep. go to yep. and visit. And you've built up a great business empire. Um, shame the weather's not been better this summer, I guess. Well, some of them, we've got a lot of indoor uh, leisure attractions and they've been trading like gangbusters. So you, you win some, so you lose The some. ones that need the sun have had a, tr a troublesome time the last ten days. Now, if I'm buying an ice cream, yeah. if I'm popping out of Ross's on the front yeah. at South End to buy an ice cream, yeah. I may well be an eight- or nine-year-old kid yeah. on holiday. Yep. I'm going to pay in cash. You can. You know, and these are relatively low-priced items yep. that you're selling, and in this case, lots and lots of them. I, I've really been shocked to discover that for businesses, if you take your cash to put into your, into your business account, yep. that NatWest are now charging you. Well, they all charge you. They, they all charge. But all charge. £2.50 for every £100 you put in in cash. I mean, cash is legal tender. They shouldn't be charging for cash at all. I don't think it's as much as £2.50 for every 100 It's around £7 for every £1,000. But this is the challenge, is you've got to find a bank. Well, I've seen... closing them. Well, Left, yeah. right and centre. So you okay. can't actually okay. put the cash in the bank. And then there's... If you, then you, the option is to use the post office, so you can trundle yep. up to the yep. post office, yep. and then you've got to put a member of staff to be in that queue for ages, so you're paying that member of staff to pay the cash in, and then there's a lag of getting that cash into your bank account. So there could be a two-, three-day lag while the post office are finding which bank account you're at, and that's a real challenge as well. If you're a small business, you need that cash flow to keep coming in. Well, charges for putting in cash vary. I did yeah. see a figure of 250 but, yeah. but, I mean, you know, let's, let's not yeah. fight about that. But the basic principle is, then, that really, with the closure of the banks... The slowness of crediting you with the money that you've put in yep. and with the charges, they're kind of driving you away from cash, aren't they? Well, there's another one, I think, that's Go even on. more. So if you hold more than £5,000 in your business, in the safe, and if you're a pub, if you're a restaurant, or that's not a lot of money for a business's turnover, we're not talking about profit, but turnover here, yep. then you are penalised for insurance. And then there's another challenge. If you are a business that is seen in the marketplace to take cash, now Rossi's has been broken into three times in 12 months. Three times in 12 months. And we don't actually keep cash on site, but they are trying their luck. So if you are seen as a business now that takes cash, I think you are a target of crime. That's more of a symptom of increasing lawlessness in our country, I think, yeah. but, but obviously it's interrelated. But I've actually seen it. It's not just a, a point of, oh, that's my view. Three times in 12 months is too much, isn't it, Nigel? Yeah, and how many times in the previous few years? Oh, constantly. When we have, we've got a big chain of indoor play centres and we would be broken into one or two times a year, on average, when we were taking lots of cash. Um, when I started in 2007, we would take about 70% cash... 30% card. Yeah. Now, every year, 08, 09, it would get more and more in the favour of card. And that's another big problem. Um, you're taking all that time to sort the cash out, uh, and then cards would be much easier to, you know, just reconcile. But, I mean, but, I mean you know, you've got a range of businesses here. Yeah. You've got a very big turnover. Yeah. Uh, cash turnover. Profitability is a separate issue. Yeah, you've yeah, got a big yeah. cash turnover. Yeah. But, you know, if I'm running a local fish stall, yeah. for argument's sake, and the average transaction is six, seven, eight quid, whatever it is. Yeah. If I go from cash to cards, yeah. you know, I'm going to be charged 1.75%. Well, it would be cheaper than that. Well, it depends on the, on the size you are. Yeah, I, mean, maybe, yeah. I, mean, I mean, historically, people were worried that cards were very expensive. But they've come down, they're a lot cheaper. I think banking cash and the time to bank cash costs us more in the time element very than banking cards. All right, that's a useful counter-argument. Yeah. My worry is a bigger worry, that if we have a cashless society, yeah. they can control our lives. Well, and, and I get some criticism, back. because some of our businesses have gone cashless. Our two zoos are cashless. We don't take... How cashless. awful. I know, but... That I'd, walk do that. I'd walk out. Well, I'd walk out, James. Some people I'd do protest. I'd walk some out. People, some people do attack us on social media for that. But we used to... Uh, Marsh Farm, which is one of our zoos, it takes us four hours to cash up at the end of a busy day. Now we cash up in five minutes. And... And it's the target of crime. If that wasn't there, because we wasn't being broken into... But if into they weren't the breaking into you for cash, they could be breaking into you for anything else, couldn't they? They're breaking into you for cash. 
because they they you, the CCTV shows them trying to get to the safe. But you could opening up. But you could go and you know bank your cash every day. Or... Yeah, you, but that's not realistic, is it? If you trade on a Saturday, you can't bank it on a Sunday, can you? That's one example, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday... What Thursday, about Friday? bank holiday Mondays, which are the biggest things for hospitality and leisure, so you're keeping Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so Monday... you're going with this cashless society? No, no, I don't think we should be a cashless society. I'm just telling you, the, the challenge... When I started in 2007, loads of banks on the high street. Very easy to bank cash. You would get your money into the bank yeah, straight away. The branch closures now, are a the real problem. Branch and paying into the post office is a real challenge. You know, reduced opening hours, they're closing post offices in some of the key towns and, the, and getting changed. Change is becoming more yeah. and more difficult yeah. to access. Yeah. And you have to book it like 10 days in advance. To make Do you really? You can't just walk into the bank and go, can I have £500 worth of pound coins? They talk to you like you're, you know, like possessed. You know, well, you haven't booked this in. You should have told us, wait in advance if you wanted to collect this much change. They really put you to town. I and think, I think, you James, another, another I think worst the banks thing. are forcing you into this. Well, maybe, but also if you pay too much cash in. I mean, it's like going on who wants to be a millionaire? Like, why are you doing this? Where has yeah. it come from? You know, you have to prove or all of that. you want to withdraw cash. Oh, even worse. And even you, as a well-known local businessman yep. in Southend, they'll yep. ask you what it's for. Yeah. And if you say, what the... Has it got to do with you? Yeah. You'll probably be accused of being abusive to staff. Correct, yeah. And, finishing up, and finish up having the account closed. Do you see my bigger worry about this? I do, this? Because, because I have customers say this to us, but that's why I would never do it at our shops on the high street, because we've got 11 uh, ice cream shops yep. and various high streets. You've got a great right. business. Yeah, we would never do that. We would never go cashless there. But on our visitor attractions, where we have these massive highs and lows, whereas shops are more steady income, but we have huge peak days and massive low days at visitor attractions because mm. of school holidays and stuff, mm. it has become come easier by going cashless. And I hate, I don't want to do it, but I mean, sort of feel like being forced to do it. So in the end, kids will all have to have credit cards and debit cards, will they? Not if they come through our ice cream shops. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> you can get an ice cream from James, but not much else. Thank you for coming on and putting the counter on. Well, I'm just, I'm just you know, it is a problem and people yeah. want to pay cash, but it is becoming more and more difficult for businesses yeah. no. to bank cash. James, I, you know, I was keen to get, keen to get the practicalities of yeah, this yeah. and you're on the sharp end of this and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very... Thank you for joining me. I'm very worried about a cashless society and very worried about how the banks, big banks and big government can abuse that power to control our spending and they're already doing it, you know. With certain banks in this country, you want to invest money through Coinbase, an FCA registered business, a crypto exchange, the banks may well close your account. It's that level of control, the potential for cancellation that really, really scares me.